Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e because yeah, well, that's why you come here. <laughs> if you're not here for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, I don't know why you've come to my channel. Um, okay, so the topic for today is not the Winter Warlock. It is in fact the best Warlock cantrips in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. My gosh, I do want to give you a provisor, and I did state it in the description, when I say the best Warlock cantrips in Dungeons and Dragons 5e, I'm, at, I'm looking specifically at a generic Warlock, or a Blaster Warlock, not uh, a Warlock that is a Hex Blade, or Pact of the Blade, because I feel like they actually have a totally different feel to them and actually require a totally different video. So just to make it clear for those of you who are wondering, will they be getting Hexblade action today? Probably not. What are the best Warlock cantrips to take in Dungeons & Dragons 5e? Now I have a bias. I've always felt that the best cantrips for any class usually revolve around utility rather than attack spells. But that's just me. You don't have to agree with me. I totally understand that. I do have a bonus tip at the end of the video for Warlock Cantrip Selection. So if you're dealing with Warlock Cantrips and selecting them, I do have a bonus tip at the very end of the video so that you can sort of uh, make better decisions. Now Warlocks start with two Cantrips and eventually get a total of four cant Cantrips. It's not a lot. So you really do need to be very careful about your selection. I recommend selecting one damage dealing cantrip, I know that sounds strange, and the rest utility as a warlock. Now why would you do this? My rationale is that really a warlock only needs Eldritch Blast and utility cantrips to be a fairly functional and useful character. It's not very interesting, but Eldritch Blast does a lot of different things, so therefore why would you need to worry about picking up a whole lot of different uh, cantrips other than Eldritch Blast? That doesn't mean I won't talk about other damage dealing cantrips, because I will. That's why we're here. Warlocks get access to some of the best utility and combat cantrips, in my opinion, which surprising, it's quite surprising how that makes it a lot easier to select Warlock cantrips and spells. Otherwise, it would have been more difficult. I can think of a couple of classes, such as the Bard, where selecting cantrips is a bit of a bummer. But with a Warlock, you've really got the best of the best. I recommend these cantrips for a Blaster type Warlock or a Generic type Warlock, as I said before, and these are my reasons why. So, number one, and that'll shock a few people, is Mage Hand because it's simple to use, it will it'll get used frequently without much player skill being required. Now this is not normally what I would do, I would not normally say Mage Hand first, but I feel if you're playing a Warlock and a Blaster, you're not really going for subtlety, and therefore Mage Hand is going to be your main tool. In the past, I would certainly have said Minor Illusion, first cantrip to grab just because you can do so many different things with it. But I don't feel that that's the feel of a Warlock. That doesn't mean you couldn't do that though. These things can be interchanged. So what does the Mage Hand allow you to do? You can manipulate objects weighing less than 10 pounds or 10 pounds and less and the environment 30 feet away and there are some limitations. So it's not like you can do absolutely everything. You can't go and pick locks. You're not going to be able to um, do really fine motor control uh, activities unless your dungeon master says yes, because we do not want to uh, eliminate all of the benefits that an arcane trickster gets by suddenly opening up every option available under the sun. So mage hand would be at the top of the list. Number two, no-brainer, I'm sure everybody kind of guessed, I would go with Eldritch Blast. Now, why is that? Because it has a long range of 120 feet, it can target multiple creatures at higher levels as it powers up, it does 1d10 force damage at its lowest level, 
which most monsters don't usually have resistance or immunity to. Something like force damage is pretty good, so therefore really useful for you. Now, when it comes to the Eldritch Blast, there's a really a big factor that comes into play why it is the best cantrip for a warlock. And it's not because the cantrip is good on its own, it's because of all the other things you can do with it. Okay, without those things there, it is not quite as good as some of the other cantrips you could select, given certain circumstances, that is. Now, why would we want them? Well, because the Warlock's invocations make the Eldritch Blast your main tool. You can pick up Agonizing Blast, Eldritch Spear, Repelling Blast, Grasp of Hadar, and the Lance of uh, Legathai. Is that Legathai? Yes, something like that. So those Eld um, Eldritch Blast um, options really make a big difference. You can tailor it to do the things you want it to do. That's what makes Eldritch Blast so good, is those invocations. Without them, not so great. Okay, number three, and this could be interchanged and be taken at, uh, at, as one of your first cantrips rather than the third cantrip later on, and that is Minor Illusion, because as I've always said before, it has a wide range of applications for trickery uh, with the right dungeon master and a clever player. If you don't have those things in play, then it may not be the best choice for you. But Minor Illusion has always been uh, top of my list. It creates a limited illusionary sound or an image of an object about five foot cubed roughly for about a minute. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And if you don't believe me, go and check out Trent Monk because he has a video on how to use it. And it will cover pretty much everything you need to know. Number four, and that is Prestidigitation. Impossible to say correctly, but I would say grab this because it is the universal magic Swiss army knife of Dungeons and Dragons. Said this before, really useful, so this is a no-brainer for me. Now, it has multiple effects, so you can colour something, flavour, chill, warm something, clean something, soil the guard's pants if you really want to, you can light and extinguish a small flame in a goblin's set of hair, or twigs, or whatever they have got on them. You can create sensory effects, such as a non-magical trinket, or a small illusionary image. There you go, lots of different options, that's why it's such a good spell. Why is it not selected sooner? Again, it really comes down to personal preference. Things like Mage Hand, Minor Illusion and Prestidigitation are really good and it really does come down to personal preference and how you understand how to use those particular cantrips. Okay, alternative cantrips that you could use that are really useful that are not Eldritch Blast. For those of you who are wanting something other than the usual thing that everybody talks about, here we go. Chill Touch would be my first choice from the player's handbook. Because it has a range of 120 feet, which is really good. It does 1d8 necrotic damage at its lowest level. It will stop creatures healing. And it has a ruthless effect on undead creatures. Basically, they wind up with disadvantage. Uh, so that's really nice. It doesn't last forever, but disadvantage being applied to any kind of attack roll that a creature is making that you can pull off is great without having to use something like Vicious Mockery, which is not an option for a Warlock anyway. I would always want to go with <clears throat> Undead Creature, Chill Touch. Okay, now if your Dungeon Master is really nice and allows you access to, say, spells and cantrips from Xanathar's Guide to Everything, I would like you to consider the following cantrip. Toll the Dead. I knew somebody was already going to say that. Toll the Dead because it does 1d12 necrotic damage with a range of 60 feet to an injured monster. That's really awesome. Now, it is only 1d8 at its lowest level if they're not injured, so you don't target the uninjured monsters. You target monsters that have already lost hit points. And then, of course, it's all gravy after that. Personally, I hate to say it, but it's probably one of the most effective 
damage dealing cantrips in the game. Short of Eldritch Blast if you are a Warlock and you are using the Invocations. Okay, so here we go. Here's the bonus tip for those of you who were wondering. What was I going to say? You really don't need anything but the player's handbook for selecting Warlock cantrips. Okay? Toll of Dead is nice. It's a good spell, but frankly, you know, I wouldn't go with picking up too many damage dealing cantrips with a Warlock because you get so few. And of course, you don't get an awful lot of different options with a, a Warlock. But you really do not need Xanathar's Guide to Everything to make a Warlock work well. The player's handbook is good enough. You don't need anything more than that. Okay, so I know there's a few people here who are sitting here and thinking, well, you haven't talked about the Hexblade. What about the Hexblade, Fred? And what about Pact of the Blade, if I want to go Pact of the Blade? That kind of Warlock is so different, I almost feel like it's another class in itself. And that's not what this video is going to cover. That requires another video topic at some point. Because it really is a totally different way of looking at how things work. That would be my suggestion to you. Be patient, it will eventually come. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, fantastic. I do actually have a series of videos on the Warlock that you're welcome to go and check out. I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters. You're also welcome to go and check out if you want to. Uh, if you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, then well, you can do that by using my Patreon page. Uh, get access to the written uh, scripts for all of my videos and the unlisted live stream videos if you don't want to worry about doing the subscribe bell button and notifications I totally understand that's fine too plus a few other different things that i drop on there from time to time i also have uh, affiliate links to the book depository and amazon where i get a small commission when you buy stuff there uh, i have merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos or you could just watch my videos that's fine too uh, make sure to share like and subscribe hit the bell button to be notified when i go live and when i publish new videos and hey till next time Keep rolling those 20s.